All right, guys, I've got a 2019 F-150 here. As you can see, it's got the five liter V8 engine. And today we're gonna go for a starter replacement. So I'm gonna show you guys step-by-step step how to replace a starter on one of these trucks. I'm really not gonna get into too much diagnosing a bad starter or anything like that because we're actually doing this job on a customer request. So he wants a starter put in whether we diagnose it or not. So that's what we're gonna do. So I have the new starter right here. This is the part number. Before we start, I wanna go ahead and show you guys the new starter because you'll notice here, unlike the older F-150s, this one only has two bolt holes. So just a few years before this, a lot of these F-150s, they had three bolt starters and the third bolt on the very top was very difficult to get to, but they've since updated that design. I guess a lot of people weren't very happy about it. So now there's just two bolts holding this thing in. It's a lot easier to replace. So let's get up in there and I'll show you guys what to do. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is take a 10 millimeter socket, disconnect the battery, pull off one of the battery cables. I'm going for the positive cable. Set that out of the way. Okay, next you're gonna to wanna to come under the truck and locate the starter. So it's going to be on the passenger side. So here we got the oil pan. And right up there is the starter. And now you'll notice the truck is four wheel drive, okay, but the front differential doesn't really interfere with the starter any, so two wheel drive and four wheel drive, it's pretty much the same labor to, to do a starter on one of these. So step one, take a 13 millimeter socket or wrench and come up under here and undo this nut for the ground cable. Set this cable out of the way. Now on this truck, there is a shield underneath and there are four 15 millimeter bolts, one bolt on each corner holding the shield on. Now I took the shield off, that way I could get the camera in there and film this. If you do take it off, it probably would make it a little bit easier to give you some more room, but you could theoretically leave it on. I probably would go ahead and take it off and make it a little bit easier. Okay, next here on the back of the starter, we have a 10 millimeter nut for the exciter wire. And then if you pop off this little cover here, there is another 13 millimeter nut for the battery cable. So you're gonna wanna undo both of those in no particular order. Now for the 13. There goes the nut for it. Pull this cable off. I'll tuck these out of the way down here. And this is the stud where we had our ground cable earlier that we took off at first. And so we're gonna wanna remove this bolt now. It is a 13 millimeter also. remove the stud. Now that second starter bolt that's up here on top, it is also a 13. So just take a ratchet and a socket, get up in there, break it loose. And at this point you may be able to reach up there by hand and, and unscrew it. Okay, that bolt is out. 
Okay, at this point, the starter can be removed. Just pull it straight back. Angle it down. And slide it straight out the front. Now on these starters, something that can happen is that the cable right here on the starter can corrode. This one here actually doesn't look so bad. But one option that you can do on the new starter is take some battery terminal protector or some other type of corrosion inhibitor and you can spray it on this cable to try to prolong its life. So I'll go ahead and spray some on there. All right, time to get the new starter in. Now once the starter is in place, I'm going to go ahead and start the two bolts by hand. Now I'm going to go ahead and get these two bolts tightened down. The official torque spec for these bolts is 35 foot-pounds. I'm not going to worry about torquing them exactly to 35 foot-pounds though. It's kind of cumbersome to get a torque wrench in there and do all that. If I were you, I would just tighten them up by hand. good right there. I'm gonna thread it in by hand as much as I can and then go for the the wrench or the ratchet I should say. All right that's pretty much good right there. Okay now we got to get the battery cable, the exciter wire, and the ground cable connected. Just gonna bring these back up. Now these two nuts here, you may want to consider torquing them if you have a torque wrench, it would be a good idea. Battery cable here. And the reason why is because at the base of these studs on the starter is made of plastic. And I've actually seen several times these get over tightened and you can actually crack the starter and break it and then you got to get a new one. So don't over tighten these nuts. I would go to torque spec on these if I were you. Now this 13 millimeter nut right here, is going to get torqued to 106 inch-pounds, not foot-pounds. And that's it. Put the cover back on. Next, the exciter wire. And the nut. This nut right here is going to get torqued to 53 inch-pounds. Just make sure before you torque the nut, on the side of this exciter wire cable, it's got this little tab. Make sure that the tab isn't sitting over here. Make sure that it's sitting, you'll see where it's supposed to fit. There's a little groove right there, or a little, a little step on the black plastic part on the starter, so it's supposed to fit right there. And they do that so that when you tighten the nut, the cable doesn't rotate with the nut. It's basically like a stopper to keep the cable from turning. All right, here we go. So we're set to 53 inch pounds which by the way is not a lot at all. Okay, that's it. It clicked, so we're good. Like I said, too much torque and you're gonna crack the plastic here, so be careful. Okay, lastly, we've got the ground cable here. So get that back on there along with the nut. I like to hold the cable with my hand while I tighten it so it doesn't rotate the cable too much. Okay, I went ahead and put that shield back on. Like I said, it's just four 15 millimeter bolts that hold it on, pretty easy to take off. So let's get the truck back down and finish this up. Pretty much all that's left is to reconnect the battery cable and call it a day. Always double check afterwards too and make sure that the terminal is actually tight. Make sure you can't move it. All right, let's go start it up. Fire it up. Well, it starts. And actually, to be honest, it starts up a lot faster than it did before.